Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School down at Ridgetown College University of Guelph today, catching up with Dr. Dave Hooker. Dave, how's it going? Great. It's been a great, great day so far. And, you know, a really pretty good spring here. And we're standing in front of some emerged corn. you got yeah. some nice, even emergence. Dave, we've talked a lot about this over the years. You know, the importance of even emergence, uniform stands, and how they contribute to overall yield, optimum yield. Um, but, you know, we want, and we've also talked about the need to avoid those laggards, those slow, yeah. late emergers, and, and the impacts that they can have on yield. But now I want to talk about gibberella aerot. Um, you know, when I think about gibberella, I don't think about corn emergence. But you've just completed some research that tells us a little different story. Yeah, so we're in a Great Lakes region here and, and just about every year, not every year, but, but we have localized areas every year where we have um, concerns regarding dawn accumulation in corn and micro other mycotoxins mm -hmm. as well. And that's, of course, mostly associated with gibberella ear rot. Now, I did some work just recently with um, uh, Dr. Kechiana Ellie and uh, Dr. Art Shasma. And uh, so we put our minds together and we thought, you know, after the 2018 epidemic, at gibberella ear rot and dawn and corn, what are some of the factors that really we need to look at in order to better manage uh, the disease and mycotoxin accumulation? And so in 2018, we noticed several factors, like agronomic factors, were associated um, like just anecdotally, with higher dawn levels or more visible gerberella ear rot. And one of them was uh, late emerging corn plants. And so up until now, we've been talking about late emergers that being reducing that reduce yield, and we have to pay attention to them and adjust our, our system, our tillage practice, our, our planters in order to uh, optimize uniform emergence. So every corn plant is a carbon copy of itself uh, developmentally, mm -hmm. not necessarily spacing in the yeah. row, but developmentally. And we've always talked about the yield impact that that would have if that didn't happen. But now we know through this research that those delayed plants actually have higher than 300% higher dawn uh, compared to its neighbors. And so those plants, if they have higher dawn, if they have higher gibberella ear rot visual symptoms that produce the dawn, then that would contribute to the overall grain quality, let's say, of a field per se. What's happening there, Dave, when, when those plants fall behind, they contribute to dawn? Yeah, so we looked at perhaps different environmental factors because those plants that fall behind, obviously they're kind of within a different silking window and maybe the weather during that different silking window, maybe that was just associated with higher dawn. But we have all kinds of different environments that we looked at. And we looked at the weather associated with the silking, with those big plants, those, um, those first plants to develop. And we looked at the weather around that and looked at the weather around silking. And really there was no association with higher dawn with those later mergers with weather. And so the only thing that we can contribute or associate these later mergers with is just stress. The plants were under stress and those conditions, those stress conditions, made the plant susceptible to gibberella ear rot infection and also uh, dawn accumulation as well. Now if we have a field with a lot of late emergers, Dave, what type of impact can we have from dawn from a yield perspective, from a loss and quality perspective? Yeah, so if, if a kernel is infected, of course, with gibberell ear rot, those kernels will not fill as they usually will. So we usually do see a yield reduction. But I think most importantly, though, it's the mycotoxin accumulation that we need to be concerned about rather than the yield reduction. Sure, 1%, 2% yield reduction, but sometimes if an entire field, if the entire corn sample has those higher mycotoxin, like it could pose problems for the feed. Like, even though that the yield may be a, a minor factor, really the mycotoxins are the major concern here. And that's why we need to consider all kinds of management factors. So Dave, final question, and that is, you know, what should growers be doing to make sure that we avoid those late emergers? You know, those agronomy, you know, tips that we talked about, what's on the top of the list? And for one thing, we need to reduce that individual plant stress. 
And these are late mergers. Of course, those late mergers are stressed plants and we need to reduce that stress as much as possible. And so we need to check off all kinds of boxes in order to reduce that effect of those late mergers in a corn stand. So it could be adjusting seeding depth. So making sure that that seed depth is between two or two and a half inches, or sometimes even deeper if that's where the moisture is. Yeah. Driving the planter, you know, not too fast according to the manufacturer's recommendation of the planter. Making sure the double disc openers are nice and sharp, mm -hmm. and uh, and other components not worn out as well. So, uh, the seed firmers, all kinds of boxes that need to be checked in order to reduce that those delayed plants in the row. Awesome. Well, Dave, hey, always great to have you on the Corn School. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Yep, thanks. Good to be here.